Hello everyone and welcome to our Learning Hour webinar. I'm Kuralan and I'm excited to be your host for today's session. Today we have our expert trainer Ms. Adila and she will be sharing a very interesting topic about mastering condition format formulas. During the session, you may ask questions in the chat box below. Ms. Adila will answer the question at the end of the session. Without waiting any longer, I hand over the floor to Ms. Adila. All right. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamualaikum. So firstly, thank you so much, Kunalan, for the introduction. And I would like to welcome everyone to the Learning Our Webinar session with Excel Academy. And for today, we will go through a, a, a specific topic, okay, an interesting one, which is called conditional formulas. All right. So if you're used to Excel before, you may heard of conditional formatting and also conditional formulas. Please take note that these two are uh, two different things. And today we'll be covering conditional formulas, okay? Right, so here, let me just share my Excel workbook. So all of us can know what are the different conditional formulas that I will be covering for today's session, right? Okay, sharing my screen here. All right, so here is an blank Excel workbook, right? And for conditional formulas, we will be covering, I would say, around five, okay? So firstly, we'll look into some if, okay, or some ifs, okay? So definitely, if you see with the S there, those are plural. So if the condition is more than one, then we'll use some ifs with S. And then we'll also go through count if and also count ifs. We will also have a look at Con the conditional formulas of if only, okay, up to three scenarios. So later I'll show you what do I mean by these three scenarios. And then we'll have a look at the combination of if together with the formula and, and finally, if with or. So we'll be looking at these five different conditional formulas, right? So for all of these conditional formulas, there are no button that you can click on, okay, at the top of your Excel workbook here. Example here, you can see when you open a black Excel workbook, there's file tab, home tab, insert tab, etc. Okay, and then inside those tab, you have your ribbon as well. So conditional formulas, you can you cannot find it in any of the tab or even ribbon, okay? But you can do so by typing in the formula, all right? For an example here, Let's say you want to apply the formulas under cell F2. What you should do is you should always start your formula with the symbol of equal to, right? So start with the symbol equal to as per shown in front of the screen here and then just type in the formula. Example, sum if. So just put here S-U-M-I-F, sum if. You can see here, sum if is at the bottom here in blue color. So I want you to double click on the formula and then above your column A here, you can see there's a cancel symbol, a right symbol, and next to it is the letter Fx, right? So Fx means insert function. So I want you to click on the symbol, insert function or the letter Fx over there, and then your function arguments will come up, right? So for those who have used formulas before, you may not have used the insert function, all right, the function arguments box, all right. Maybe you straight away just input, okay, whatever you want, your range, criteria, some range, all right. But the reason why I've shown you this, the insert function and the function arguments box is because if you can see here clearly, you know what to input, all right, under range, under criteria, and some range. So this would further minimize the error that you may make inside your formula right so it's up to you you can either use the function arguments box is fine but if you are used to just using the formula like this all right then you can just go ahead and choose any method that works for you okay so here let's start off with count if sum if first so here i'll show you a file here titled count if sum if appliances and let's have a look at what are some of the data that we have inside each column okay so here inside column A, we have the order number. Column B, we have date. Column C, we have the driver's name who delivered the item. 
Column D are the items. Example here, we have TV, washing machine, refrigerator. Seems like all of these are household items. Column E is the number of items that they delivered. Column F is the transport they use. Okay, is it, are they using truck 4, truck 3, truck 1, you know, truck 2, or is the, are the items delivered by airplane? Okay, and then under column G, we have the destination. Okay, example here, we have Boston, New York, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and so on. Okay, so when we refer to conditional formulas, the word itself explain, is explanatory, right? Conditional, meaning if you have certain condition that you want to meet, Okay, and then if you want to use the formulas, you can use conditional formulas. And some of the conditional formulas that we will be covering today is, as per shown here, some if count if, if stand alone, if combined with and, and if combined with or. So we'll start with the first two first, some if and also come if, count if. So at the bottom here, I've prepared sets of condition. Example here, under some if, we want to know what is the sum of refrigerator items? Second one, sum of washing machines. Third, sum of items transported by truck four only. And then number four, sum of items transported by trucks, meaning by truck one, two, three, and also four, right? Now, if you want the sum of refrigerator item, Previously or currently, what do we do? All right, if we don't know the usage of some if count if, uh, count if, let's say if I want to know what is the refrigerator items, the total, what I'll do is here, I'll filter to refrigerator only, all right? I'll tick only on refrigerator, I'll click on OK, and then I highlight all of the number of items here and I can see sum is 105. And then what do I do? I just type in here, 105. So that shows my refrigerator items. Now, I'm not saying that this method is wrong, all right? But what I'll say is the, this method can actually invite, okay, some human error. Because why? We may have tick wrongly, okay? Maybe we want to tick on refrigerator, we accidentally tick on microwave, right? And then what if when you highlight the numbers here, you miss one of the rows. You only highlight the four rows here, but you miss out the fifth one, right? So if that's the case, then your sum of refrigerator items is wrong already, all right? So we want to minimize all of this error. And then there are cases as well when you filter and filter, all right, a lot of times, okay? Sometimes when we are asked, okay, let's say people ask me, Adila, how do you get the refrigerator items? Okay, and then I started to perform my filtering, right? end up I didn't get 105. Okay, so this is very dangerous. We don't want this to happen. So to ensure that the numbers are definitely correct, that's why we are using conditional formulas. And in this case, we'll be using some if, right? So those are some of the error that you may have faced before, that I faced before, right? And now let's have a look at how we can apply some if formulas inside our data. So here under cell F36, I want you to start off by putting the symbol equal to sum if, S-U-M-I-F. You can see the blue color here, sum if. You double click on the formula, one, two. And then above column B, you can see the letter Fx, insert function. Click on insert function, your function arguments will come out. Now, for your range, it's very simple. Now, currently, you are looking for refrigerator items, all right? Can you let me know refrigerator is inside which column? The word refrigerator, okay? So, range, you need to highlight the whole column. So, in this case, the word refrigerator is under column D. So, I highlighted the whole column D, D1 until D25, okay? Now, for criteria, we know the criteria is the word refrigerator correct that is the condition that we want to uh, fulfill now there are two methods how you can approach this first under criteria you can type in the word refrigerator okay that's one but for me it'll take you some time to type in and whatnot right so to make it easy for criteria i'll just go to column d and then I'll just click on any cell with the word refrigerator. Example here, cell D6. That's the word refrigerator, right? So that is your criteria because you want to find refrigerator. Now, sum range is very important. 
some range you need to highlight the column with numbers data. Now, column A is order number. Yes, it's in the form of numbers data, but it does not reflect the number of items. Therefore, we cannot highlight column A. Column B, again, it's a date number data, but this is in the form of date. So here, it left us with only column E. Okay, so some range here, you need to choose column with numbers data. So in this case, the most appropriate one is column E because it represents number of item, which is exactly what we want. So for some range, you highlight E1 until E25 as well, and then you click on OK. Now you can see we got exactly the same number, which is 105 Okay, for some of refrigerator items. So that is how we can use some if when you open the function argument box, they will ask for range. Okay. Where does your data located at? Which column? Criteria, you have two methods. Either you want to type in your criteria or in this case, what I've shown you earlier is I just choose one cell that has the word refrigerator under column D and some range choose the column with data numbers, right? So that is for sum if. Now for the second one, let's do it together. Sum of washing machine items. So we want washing machine, right? So again, start with equal to sum if double click on the formula and don't forget to click on fx or insert function above column D here so that your function argument box will come up. Now we want washing machine. So range you highlight the whole column that has the word washing machine. In this case it's column D. All right so range I highlight column D cell D1 until D25. For criteria, you can just choose any cell inside column D with the word washing machine. So you can either choose cell D3, D4, it's fine, okay? And this cell with the word washing machine. And some range, remember, to choose data column with data numbers. In this case, cell E1 until E25, right? So when you click on OK, the answer is 164, okay? And third, we want to find sum of items transported by truck form. So they are asking for a specific transportation, which is truck form only. So again, here we start off with equal to sum if we double click on the formula, we click on fx here, insert function. Now, see the criteria is truck form. So truck form is located under column F. So under your range, you need to highlight the whole column with the word truck form. Okay, so it's column F. So I highlight F1 until F25. For criteria, we can actually choose any cell with the word truck form. So here I'll highlight cell F19 and some range is column E because column E is the column with numbers data. So we highlight E1 until E25, when I click on OK, the answer is 156. Okay, so the first three is quite straightforward. Refrigerator is 105, washing machine is 164, items transported by truck 4 is 156. Now, the fourth one, the last one is a little bit tricky. Okay, because we want all trucks, meaning we must choose truck 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? So let me show you some of the approach that some of you may have taken, okay? So you may have started off with equal to sum if, right? You double click on the formula, insert function here. So truck is all under column F. So your range, you would highlight cell F1 until F25. Now, some of the participants that I've encountered before under criteria, they click on all of the truck. Okay, truck one, two, three, four. So what do they do is they click on truck one, they put comma, they click on truck two, they put comma, they click on truck three, they put comma, and they choose any cell with the word truck four. And then if you can see here under criteria, it's F17, comma, F11, comma, F12, comma, F13. And then under some range, okay, they will highlight E1 until E25. Now let's click on OK and see what is the result. 
you can see here you've entered too many arguments for this function. So please take note that this method does not work, right? So that's one of it. Second, okay, this one is a little bit creative. What do they do is they sum everything together, okay, truck one, two, three, four, and airplane, and then they would only deduct the airplane portion to get all of the trucks, truck one, two, three, and also four. Now, this method is not exactly correct because you use the function of sum, whereby you need to use the function of sum if, okay? So here, the correct method for you to ensure that Excel picks up all of the truck word, truck one, two, three, four, is by doing the following method, right? So you start off with equal to, you type in sum if, okay? You double click on the formula and then you click on the fx symbol here, insert function. Now your range is simple, column F, because truck one, two, three, four, all is in column F. So you highlight your range of F1 until F25. Now, the trickiest part is under your criteria. What do you need to input under your criteria so that Excel will pick up all of the word truck one, two, three, and also? Truck four. So under criteria, I want you to type the word truck, T R U C K, and then I want you to click on shift number eight, the symbol of asterisk or the small star there. When you use the star, it represents multiplication, right, under Excel. So I want you to put that symbol at the end of the word truck, T R U C K. Okay. And then at the end, under some range, I want you to put column E, okay, which is that is the column with data number. So put in cell E1 until E25. Okay, you highlight the whole thing, E1 until E25. When you click on OK, you will get the answer of 511. Okay, so let us double check here. First refrigerator, we check already. We filter into refrigerator. Now let's filter into washing machine only. Okay. So here I'll click on only washing machine. And if I sum everything together, the answer is correct at 164. And then next, let's try and check for truck 4. Okay. So let's only filter on truck 4 only. Right. And then here you can see the sum is correct, which is 15. Six. So this one is also correct. <coughs> Sorry. And finally, for the last one for trucks, let's choose truck one, two, three, and four. And let's sum everything together. And we can see here the answer is correct. Sum is 511, right? So we can see here clearly by using the function or the formula of sum if, it allows us to actually get the correct answer directly okay without having any of those error okay now here is some if only with one criteria now let's jump into some ifs okay so some ifs the reason why we use inclusive the letter s is because we have more than one criteria example here we want for microwave and also for new york right and also for new york so let me highlight this, right? So microwave and New York. So here let's use some ifs equal to some ifs, double click on the formula, insert function. Now you need to read it clearly here. Yeah? Just now your sum range is at the end when you use some if, but when you use some ifs, sum range is the first part. So under sum range, you need to choose column E, E1 until E25. Under criteria range, okay, what do we want? We want microwave. So remember, range is the whole column that have the word microwave. So for criteria range one, microwave is under column D. So you highlight D1 until D25. And then under criteria, just choose any cell with the word microwave. And then criteria range two, we want for New York, so we highlight the column with the data New York over there, which is in this case is column G. So you highlight cell G1 until 
G25, and then criteria to choose any cell with the word New York under column G. And then here you will get 25, okay? Now, for the second one, two criteria, we want some of items transported to Pittsburgh and by truck one. So that's why we use some ifs with s because we have more than one condition. All right, so let's do it together again, equal to some ifs, double click on the formula, click on insert function. So when your function arguments come out, it's easier for you to put where inside each line, right? So first some range, that would be column E, E1 until E25. Criteria range one, right? So let's have a look at the first criteria. It's Pittsburgh, okay? So the, the word Pittsburgh here, it's in column G. So that is your criteria range one, G1 to G25. Criteria is any cell with the word Pittsburgh. So I'll just choose cell G17. Criteria range two is truck one. So truck one is located under column F. So your range, you need to highlight the whole column F, which is from F1 to F25. And criteria two is any cell with the word truck one under column F. So here, when you click on OK, the answer is 75, right? Now, finally, for row 49, we want sum of item ordered between 3 February and 6 February. What does it mean? We want the sum of items ordered on 3rd, 4th, 5th, and also 6th of February for this, for this, because you only want between, right? 3 to 6. So only we want to cap it into this for this, right? So this is a little bit tricky, similar to trucks, but I'll go through with you together, right? So here we'll start off with equal to some ifs. Double click on the formula, click on insert function. Now, first is some range. So we know some range is always column E in this data. So I'll highlight E1 until E25. Now let's read the condition again, right? If you can see the first condition is in relation to date, 3rd February. The second condition is also related to date, 6 February. So under your range, right, since both are dates, okay, your criteria range one, you need to highlight column B, column date. So criteria range one is B1 until B25. Now for criteria one, we want between third to six, right? So we want after, we want starting third of February. So here under criteria one, I'll put the sign of, I'll put the sign of greater than equal to 3 slash 2 slash 20, 13. Why I put equal to as well? Because I want 3rd February to be included as well. Okay, so that's why under criteria 1, I put greater than equal to 3rd February 2013. Okay, now under criteria range 2, remember the condition is still in relation to date. So your range should also be column B, which is date B1 until B25 and then under criteria 2, we only want up to 6 February. So here I'll put less than equal to 6 slash 2 slash 2013. So in this case, they only lock in the date of 3rd, 4th, 5th and also 6th, right? And here you'll get the answer of 309. So let us just double check here. Let's choose the date of 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's calculate the number of items. The sum shows as 3 or 9. Let's check our answer. The answer is also 3 or 9, right? So in this case, it is correct, right? So that is some ifs, okay? For those with more than one condition. Now, the final part for count if some if appliances file, I'll show you how we can use count ifs formula. Okay, so why as? Because here we have two condition, microwave and also Boston. All right, so let's use the function count ifs. Now, let's type with equal to count ifs. 
double click on the formula, click on insert function. Now, what do they ask us? Criteria range one. So your criteria is microwave. So range, remember, you need to highlight the whole column that has the word microwave in it. So microwave is located under column D. So your criteria range one is D1 until D25. Criteria one is any cell with the word microwave. So I'll just choose cell D12 here. Criteria range two, we want orders in Boston. So Boston is located under column G. So under criteria range two, remember the word range, you need to highlight the whole column, which is G1 to G25. And criteria two, we need to highlight any cell with the word Boston, right? And here you'll get the answer two. There are actually two number of microwave orders in Boston. Now, second one, Peter White, truck one. So let's start off with equal to count ifs. Double click on the formula. Click on FX here or insert function. Okay, let's have a look back at the criteria here. The condition we want Peter White and truck one. So under criteria range one, remember range, you need to highlight the whole column. So Peter White is located under column C. So your criteria range one is cell C1 until C25. Criteria one is any cell with the word Peter White. So I'll choose cell C17 here. Criteria range two, we want truck one. So truck one is located under column F. So Criteria range two, let's highlight the whole column F, F1 until F25. And criteria two is any cell with the word truck one. Okay. So when you click on OK, there are actually two number of Peter White journeys that uses truck one, right? Now the third one, first condition is Boston. Second condition is after 3rd February. So here, let's start off with equal to count ifs. Double click on the formula, click on insert function. Now, the first criteria is Boston. So your criteria range one should be the column with the word Boston. So in this case, it's column G. So I highlight G1 until G25. Criteria one is any cell with the word Boston. So I'll just highlight cell G6 here. Criteria range two, we want it after 3rd February. And this is date, right? So your range two should be column B, date, cell B1 until B25. And under your date, you need to input the criteria, which is after. So what symbol can represent after? After can be represented by the symbol greater than 3 slash 2 slash 20. 13, right? And here they are actually two number of orders in Boston after 3rd February. How do I check this? So if after 3rd February, meaning starting 4th February onward, 4th February. So what I'll do here, I'll only choose 4 February onwards. When I click on OK, let's have a look at how many order in Boston. So if I click on destination here only to Boston, there are only two orders. See? Okay, one microwave delivered by George Ramsey. And the second one is the item microwave as, as well, delivered by John May. Okay, so that is correct when we want to find the number of orders in Boston after 3rd February. Okay, so let's have a look at the final one. Okay, number of orders between 3rd and 6 February. So this one is the same as per the row 49 here. The only difference is we are going to use the formula of count ifs, right? So here let's start off with equal to count ifs. Double click on the formula. Insert function. Criteria range 1 is your date, 3rd February. So here I'll highlight the whole column B, date B1 to B25. Criteria 1 is we want between, so we want to, we only want the data from 3, 4, 5 and 6 February. So under criteria 1 here, I'll put the symbol greater than equal to 3 slash 2 slash 20, 13. And criteria range 2, 
is also column B because it's also date, right? Up to 6 February. So criteria range 2, I'll highlight column B again. Cell B1 to B25. And under criteria 2, I'll put less than equal to 6 slash 2 slash 20. That thing. So we can lock in those four dates, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then here, the answer that we'll get is 14. So let's try and see and filter. So we only want 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's see how many orders they are. So they are actually 14 orders, and which is correct. Here is also showing as 14. All right. So with that, that is all for the first two conditional formulas, which are sum if and also count if. Okay. Right, so I hope that's clear. Now, let's move on to the second one. Okay, so we are done with count if, sum if. Let's move on to the second one, which is if formula. Right, so for if formula, we'll have a look at three scenarios here. So let me open the file. Sorry, let me type in sum if, come if here. Sum if slash sum ifs, okay, and then let's have a look at if formula. Now, when I open if, so we have three different scenarios here. If I can zoom in, the first criteria is it's very straightforward. If the student obtains greater than or equal to 80 marks, they are considered as pass. Criteria two, okay, the second one is we have two criteria here. One, if it's greater than or equal to 80, we want to label them as excellent. And if they scored between 50 to 79, they are average student. And the last one, under column K until column M, there are three criteria. First is excellent if they got 80 and above. 50 to 79 average, below 50 is poor. Okay, so let's use the formula of if into all of these three criteria, three condition, right? So here, what I'll do is, let me remove the answer first, right? So under cell C10, I'll start off with equal to if I F, double click on the formula and then click on insert function or FX button here. So for if formula, there are only three function arguments, which are logical tests value if true, value if false. Now, under logical test, it's very simple. You just look into the criteria, if greater than or equal to 80, considered pass. So under logical test, you click on the score 92, okay, cell B10, and then you just follow the criteria, greater than or equal to 80. That's the only thing that you need to input under your logical test, because you need to test the score, right, to see whether they are greater than equal to 80 or not. So under logical test, just click on cell B10, the marks, the score of 92 here, and just put greater than equal to 80, similar as per the criteria. Now, if that is true, then I'll label them as pass. And if they did not score more than 80, I'll label them as fail. So value if true and value if false, you can customize any word that you one any label that you want so logical test done value if true done value if false is also done now click on okay and then apply the formula to the rest of the cell now you can see charles daphne eileen farah and george all of them scored less than 80 that's why they are labeled as failed right so that is how we use a formula for only one criteria okay right so that is quite straightforward now let's go to column f to column h here we have two criteria first greater than or equal to 80 is considered as excellent and if they scored between 50 to 79 they are considered as average right so let's have a look at the formula here so you start off by Sorry, let's remove all of this first. Let's start off by putting equal to if, <coughs> all right? Double click on the formula and then you click on insert function. Now, under logical test, 
let's have a look at the logical test here. You click on the score 92, cell G10, greater than, equal to 80. Just follow the first criteria. And value, if true, you put it as excellent. That's all. Now, for 50 to 79 average, you need to put it under value if false. So, more criteria that you have, you would need to put more under value if false function argument line. Okay. So, for the second one, 50 to 79, we need to put it under value if false. So, here you need to put in if if open bracket. Okay. You take the score 92, okay? And then here you put greater than, equal to 50. Why? Because if you can see the second criteria, there's, uh, I would say there, there's a range of score, right? 50 to 79. So when you want to input under your if formula, you need to take the lower limit, which is 50. Not the 79, you take the lower limit. So that's why here under value if false, what I put is I type in if open bracket G10 greater than equal to 50 comma. You put the symbol of double apostrophe. Okay. Type in the word average. Close it with another symbol of double apostrophe. And then you end the formula with closing bracket. So remember, if you have an open bracket, you need to have a closing bracket because it comes in pair. Okay, so if you open two bracket, you need to have two closing bracket as well. Okay, so here logical test G10 greater than equal to 80. Value if true, you put the word excellent. Value if false, you type in the formula if again, if open bracket G10 greater than equal to 50. Remember, always take the lower limit, comma, double apostrophe, Type the word average, double apostrophe, close bracket. And if I apply here, we can see all of them here scored between 50 to 79. That's why their results are all average. Okay, so these are the sample of two criteria. Now you understand the more criteria that you have, the harder it gets because you need to cram everything under the line value if false. Now, let's have a look at the third one, column K to column M, right? We have three criteria. First, greater than equal to 80 is excellent. Second, 50 to 79 is average. Third, zero below 50, basically zero to 50 is considered as poor. So how do we do this, right? So let's try and do it together. So first, I'll remove all the answers for column from column M, all right? And let's try and redo it from scratch. So here we type in equal to if, double click on the formula, click on insert function. Now under logical test, just put in the first criteria greater than equal to 80. So here I click on cell L10, the score 80 here, greater than equal to 80. Value if true is, Excellent. Now, under value if false, we put in if open bracket L10 is greater than equal to 50. Remember, always take the lower limit between 50 to 79 is average, right? So the lower limit is 50. That's why I put here 50, comma, double apostrophe, type in the word average double apostrophe. Right. After that, previously we closed it with a closing bracket, right? But now we need to do for the third condition, which is below 50. So here, let's separate it by comma. Type in the word if again, open bracket, L10 greater than zero. Because zero to 50 is poor, you need to choose the lower limit, which is zero. So L10 greater than zero comma double apostrophe, type in the word poor, double apostrophe, close bracket, close bracket. Why do I put closing bracket twice? Because we have opening bracket two. So closing bracket must also have two. Remember, it comes in pair. Now, 
click on OK, apply the formula to the rest of it. Now you can see only Farah and Hamilton poor because their marks is below 50 marks. Okay, Daphne, Elaine, Charles and George, all of them scored average and the rest, Amanda, Ben and Idris scored excellent. Okay, so more criteria that you have, the harder it gets, right? So that is what I want to share with you in relation to it, a formula standalone. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Now, the next one, we want to look at the combination of if with the formula and, okay, if and and together. So here, what is the criteria? Both tests, okay, the students must achieve more than 50 marks so that they are considered as parts, meaning test one must score greater than 50, test two also must score greater than 50, only then their result will be shown as pass, okay. If they fail either test, either one, they are considered as fail because they don't fulfill both criteria. So if you have criteria that you want to fulfill like both of it, then you can combine if together with and, okay? So that's how you do it, right? So first, let's remove the answer from column D and let's do it together with me. We type in equal to if, double click on the formula, you click on fx here or insert function. So under logical test, you type in the word and A and D because we want to combine if and and, right? So under logical test there, type A and D and open bracket. Take the marks from cell B9, 92 here, test 1. B9 greater than 50, comma. Cell C9 greater than 50, close bracket. So the logical test is simply type in the word and and B9 greater than 50, comma, C9 greater than 50, because you want to check for both test 1 and test 2. Value if true, if both is above 50 marks, then we consider them as pass. If either one fail, we consider them as fail. Right, so when you apply the formulas, you can see Charles, test 1, he passed the test, but test 2, his mark is cukup-cukup makala, exactly at 50. So that's why he considered as fail. Same goes for Elaine and Farah. They scored for test one, but test two, they didn't meet the minimum requirement. That's why they are considered as failed, right? So this is the combination of the formula if with and. Okay, they must fulfill both condition. Only then they will get the pass. All right, so this is if combined with and. And finally, we want to have a look at if combined with or, right? So the condition is very simple. If they pass either one test, okay, you are considered pass. So if you pass test one, you fail test two, you considered as pass. If you fail test one, you pass test two also, you considered as pass. So it's very simple. If you pass either test, you considered as pass. So if you want to use if combined with or, the method is exactly the same as per if combined with and. It's just that the word and earlier, you replaced it with the word or. That's all, right? So let's try and do it together. Equal to if, double click on the formula, click on fx, insert function here. So under logical test, we type in or, or, open bracket, b7 greater than, 50 comma c7 greater than 50 close bracket so under value if true i put in the word pass under value if false i'll put in the word fail and then click on okay so here if you can see everybody passed except for farah because both tests she didn't meet the minimum requirement of 50 that's why she considered as fail the rest some of them pass both, some of them pass either one. Doesn't matter, they are still considered as pass, right? So that is the formula of if combined with or. So with that, we have covered all five here for today, conditional formulas, some if, 
count if if okay I'll sh I've shown you three scenarios just now if combined with and and also if combined with or right so what's important about conditional formulas is you need to ensure what you put inside it function arguments is correct that's one so read the instruction carefully is it range is it criteria is it some range right so all of that are very is very important second you need to clearly define what is your condition right so it will help you further when you want to input under your function argument box okay so with that i hope uh, my explanation is clear and i hope uh, this sample would be helpful to help you in your daily work or in your daily task so with that um i'll stop it here first and if you have any questions okay feel free to let me know right i'll be here to answer any questions that you have so thank you so much for having me and now i'll return back the session to kunalan thank you everyone okay thank you miss adila for get sharing uh, all right feel to free to leave your comment in your, any questions or doubts to in the chat box because uh miss adila will respond to them okay so just wait a moment Mm, it seems there are no more questions. Okay, uh, now let me share about um, our upcoming training sessions. Okay, in November, we are offering Certific Digital Marketing Professional Courses and we also have Miss Adilia's Microsoft Excel Ignory and Advanced Level Courses on 22 and 23 November. So you guys, please take note. If you want to join, please uh, uh, co contact us to proceed to more further about the courses. And we also have SEO and SEM courses. Next, uh, this is our upcoming trainings in December. We also have two Excel classes for Ms. Adila in 13 and 14 December and 15 December about the intermediate advanced level and basic level. Next, uh, we have also data analytic evaluation and masterclass. If you guys are interested, please uh, like, share and comment about our webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Adila. All right. Thank you, Kunalin. And thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye.